Welcome back to the Daily Dope. Um, I'm your friendly commentator, Brandon, of course. Uh, like I always say, I'm just some normal person that uh, is giving commentary. I'm not an expert in, on any of this stuff. Um, so one of the things that I do report on a lot or I do comment a lot about is this uh this opioid crisis that we're in and what we do is we try to find solutions for it and we keep an open mind unfortunately trump has set up this opioid commission with chris christie heading it off and kelly and conway uh and all these other people that really don't give two shits about anything to do with this crisis They just want to help their friends get government contracts to do things like rehabs and drug testing. And, you know, the police uh, ramp up to bust doctors and patients and stuff, just like what we see with uh, many other things. This, you know, handling every problem that there is to do with drugs with a basically with a damn sledgehammer. So anyway as solutions like cannabis legalization and access to medical marijuana um as those issues uh, as far as solutions as those proposed solutions are basically just fucking blown off and laughed at by the opioid commission um even on in luau of 12,000 comments being sent to them in that uh regard you know they don't they're not it it doesn't seem like they really want to do things that have been proven to work because we know that in the in the um places where medical marijuana is legal and where they have good safe access to it um opioid abuse has gone way down by the numbers by all measurable numbers including a a big drop a super big drop 20 to 25 percent drop in opioid related deaths overdose deaths so instead of like taking that into consideration they ignore that in fact christy even went on to further uh say that if you legalize marijuana it'll lead to, it'll actually lead to more opioid deaths because you know more people are just going to do drugs if you legalize marijuana and of course that all of it's going to be like a gateway right to heroin which is bullshit, and they fucking know it. The gateway to heroin is the prescriptions, all right? <laughs> the gateway to heroin is that fucking we're in Afghanistan protecting the po- the poppy fields for the illegal heroin trade. We've been doing that for over a decade, and no one seems to bring that shit up when they're talking about this conversation. In fact, Trump put more boots on the ground in a- uh, Afghanistan, and now that the Iraq war is basically like they're pulling the troops out of there again they're going to afghanistan as well so sounds like that shit's just gonna keep on going that's how the fucking uh the gateway to heroin those are the gateways the gateway out of heroin is probably uh cannabis but whatever there's other solutions that they're totally ignoring and one of them is this notion that if you have if you provide a safe space for heroin injection and a place even one step farther than that, like Portugal and Argent or uh, <clears throat> Amsterdam, where they actually have injection sites that are run by the state that ha- they provide you with the drugs. They monitor people. They have counselors and doctors on site in case someone wants to, you know, get clean or in case somebody did overdose, then you have doctors right there to handle it. They're in an environment where, all that you know it's it's much safer and you know obviously this is america we're the biggest hypocrites ever you know we're the goody goody people we don't do drugs blah 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 well whatever man if you admit the first part of uh is fixing a problem is admit that you have a fucking problem all right nobody wants to admit that america does have a problem we consume 80 percent of the fucking drugs in this world (laughs) and we're only five percent of the population all right, enough of my normal talking points. Let's read. I'm just going to try to read right through this article because I pretty much don't really have anything to add to it. I might say something about something, but man, this is solid reporting here by German Lopez of Vox. So, 
Yeah, let me just read this article for you. Um, Why U.S. cities are opening safe spaces for injecting heroin. Several cities, including Philadelphia, San Francisco, and Seattle, are aiming to open a safe injection site soon. American cities are slowly uh, rallying around a new response to the opioid epidemic, safe spaces for using heroin. The concept recently gained traction in San Francisco, where officials said this week that they intend to open such a space known as a supervised drug consumption facility or safe injection site as early as July. There are places where people, uh, these are places where people can use drugs with sterile injection equipment and the supervision of trained staff who are ready with the opioid overdose antidote naloxone if anything goes wrong. The sites may also link people with addiction treatment on request. <clears throat> the idea, while well, in an ideal world no one would use dangerous and potentially deadly drugs, many people do. So it's better to give these drug users space a space where they can use with some sort of supervision. It is a harm reduction approach. And here's the thing. Studies consistently show that supervised consumption facilities work. These kinds of sites have opened in Canada, Australia, and Europe, showing drops in drug overdoses, related emergency care calls, risky behaviors that lead to HIV or hepatitis C transmissions, and general public disorder and uh, nuisance associated with drugs. Yet, the facilities remain highly controversial in the U.S., of course. After decades of the war on drugs, much of America's drug policy is colored by a criminalized, stigmatized approach to addiction, one that demands shunning and shutting down all drug use and trying to make sure that nothing is perceived as even remotely enabling or allowing drug use. Under this view, the idea of giving people a safe space to use drugs seems downright counterintuitive. <clears throat> Several places across the U.S., however, are currently moving forward with supervised drug consumption facilities backed by a strong growing evidence base and driven to stop the deadliest drug overdose crisis in American history. In 2016, nearly 64,000 people died of drug overdoses in the U.S., a record high, and at least two-thirds of those deaths were linked to opioids, including heroin and illicit fentanyl. It's under this context that critics are now considering trying to just uh, trying just about anything to reduce drug overdose deaths and other drug related harms, even if it means going against the kind of thinking that has been uh, baked into U.S. drug policy for years. <clears throat> so multiple cities are now considering these safe injection sites. San Francisco is now angling to become the first city with a legally sanctioned safe injection site. City officials said that the first such facility could open as soon as July, which could make it the first in the country. I'm sorry about the hiccups. <clears throat> it could make it the first in the country to turn the policy into reality. San Francisco is not the is not the first to move forward with the plan. Earlier this year, Philadelphia announced its intention to open a supervised drug consumption space. Last year, Seattle announced plans for a supervised drug consumption facility and allocated $1.3 million for it. But it's not clear when Philadelphia or Seattle's facilities will open. Other cities are also considering such sites, including Denver, Ithaca, New York, and New York City. Um, unsanctioned facilities have been operating in the U.S. for years. Some of the sites are makeshift set up by drug users in areas where they commonly use drugs. At least one, though, is secretly run by a harm reduction group that provides other kinds of services to drug users, and this group's work has been backed by some studies. The idea faces several layers of resistance in the U.S., starting with the federal opposition. In a statement about the proposed uh, proposal to open supervised consumption facilities in Vermont, the U.S. Department of Justice, led by Attorney General Jeff Sessions, warned that the facilities, quote, would violate federal law. The Justice Department claimed in a statement, quote, it is a crime not only to use illicit narcotics, but to manage and maintain sites on which such drugs are used and distributed. There's also a widespread not in my backyard or NIMBY sentiment with these kinds of services. <clears throat> um, I almost feel like George Carlin invented this NIMBY. <laughs> I remember his like stand up jokes about it. 
So essentially, people are worried that if a supervised drug consumption facility opened in their neighborhood, it would attract drug users to where they live, and that could cause a rise in general crime and social disorder. Critics also war uh, worry that supervised consumption facilities would lead to more drug use because they would remove a barrier, the, perhaps some of the stigma, to drug use. Um, not really. So the Justice Department made this exact argument about Vermont. Quote, such facilities would also threaten to undercut existing and future prevention initiatives by sending exactly the wrong message to children in Vermont. The government will help you use heroin. Indeed, by encouraging and normalizing heroin injection, safe injection facilities may even encourage individuals to use opioid, opiates for the first time or to switch their method of ingestion from snorting to injection, the later uh, carrying greatly increased risk of fatality and overdose. Um, now, if this, this is a pretty uninformed thing to say because by virtue and by definition, safe injection sites have people on standby, um, you know, just in case there was some overdoses. But, you know, so that's what they're saying. They're saying somebody might be like, oh, hey, you know what? Instead of sniffing my heroin, I'm going to go to one of these safe injection sites and let them shoot it into me. I mean, if someone's going to decide to shoot heroin, I'm sure they're just going to do it themselves, man. Uh, whatever, there's so much to that statement that just doesn't make sense. But that's what happens when you got a big bloated bureaucracy and a war on drugs that don't give a shit about anything but putting people in jail. They don't care about facts, and they're definitely not up for a discussion or trying to figure out, you know, you're not going to educate them, all right? It is no coincidence that the Justice Department is making this argument. Law enforcement officials are some of the biggest opponents of supervised consumption facilities, and these officials can partially can be partially persuasive for politicians at the local and state level where police hold a lot of sway over any policy related to public safety. In Philadelphia, for one, a key turning point seemed to be the police commissioner, Richard Ross, going for being, as ABC News put it, dead set against supervised consumption facilities to, quote, keep in an open mind if they can truly save lives. The research, meanwhile, is pretty clear on both the NIMBY and increased drug use concerns. They are wrong. <clears throat> Safe, research, uh, safe injection sites are backed by research. Researchers have been gathering evidence on safe injection sites for decades, <clears throat> since the first supervised consumption facility opened in Switzerland in 1986. Since then, studies have cons consistently found that supervised consumption facilities help cut down the drug-related problems, including overdoses and general public health and safety issues. Drawing on more than a decade of studies, the European monitoring center for drugs and drug addiction or emcdda in 2017 concluded that supervised drug consumption facilities led to quote safer use for clients and wider health and public uh order benefits among those benefits reductions in risky behavior that can lead to hiv or hepatitis c transmission through shared needles drops in drug related deaths and emergency service call outs related to overdoses and greater uptake on drug addiction treatment, including highly effective medications for opioid addiction. Despite concerns that the facility would draw more drug users to an area and cause disorder, the research suggests, according to the EMCDDA, that these facilities lead to less public injection and fewer syringes discarded in the area, both of which can benefit local communities. The facilities weren't linked to higher crime in Sydney, Australia, or Vancouver, Canada. In fact, were linked to reduced street disorder and encounters with police. Quote, these, service facilities, uh, these services facilitate rather than delay treatment entry and do not result in higher rates of local drug-related uh, crime. Now, I did a story about a uh, town in Ohio where the police... Uh, sheriff there said we're not going to use Narcon like if you overdose we're just going to let you die and then they had a video where they're walking around the town in one of the towns in this county and people were literally like living in the streets there was uh, shooting galleries under bridges and in just abandoned party stores and shit it was kind of disgusting 
Um, and the thing is, is they were, they were doing a needle exchange or just passing out clean needles in general. And when they were doing that, they had a, it was basically a cop that was doing it and they were asking people if they wanted to go to rehab and shit. But the way they were doing it was like real bossy and they treated people inhumane, in my opinion, just by the way they talked to them. And it was just overall like, like a authoritarian style not I don't even know how to explain it. It just didn't seem like there was any compassion involved. It just seemed like, hey, here's a problem we have to deal with, and we really don't care about these people, but we're sick of them just dropping like flies on the side of the road and shit. Um, the sad part about that is, is several police forces in that in that county have reports of uh, some of their officers being addicted and even using heroin. So. These opioid situations, you know, we're, it's time to start looking at all the tools that you have available to you, all right? I mean, this is ridiculous. And especially people are like, oh, I don't want that in my backyard. Well, here's the fucking thing, man. These people are in your backyard whether you like it or not, all right? This isn't just some problem where it's isolated into, like, the ghetto area where, you know, your lily white ass don't ever have to drive through, all right? This isn't that. This is a situation where it might be your uncle or your grandpa that's dying from the opioid overdose. Or the drug addict is going to find you and rob you. You know, he's going to be in your neighborhood, might even rob your house because they're everywhere now. They're not just, you know, places where you don't go or in neighborhoods that you won't be. So, whatever. Let me get back to this reading. <clears throat> So, uh, the facilities, yes, researchers at the Lacanau, Lacanau Institute for Medical Research in Pennsylvania conducted another review of evidence for Philadelphia. They proposed similar findings as the EMCDDA. But they went further, developing models to quantify how many drug overdose deaths could be prevented and how much more money or how much money could be saved with a supervised consumption facility in Philly. They found that as many as 76 drug overdose deaths annually could be prevented compared to the 907 people who died of an overdose in Philadelphia in 2016. Damn. And in terms of skin and soft tissue inject, uh, infections alone, the city would save as much as $1.8 million in hospitalization costs each year, according to the review. And that's pretty good, too. Like, you know, you, you, you want... Lot, a lot less people coming into the emergency room with like their arms are all blown out because they've been shooting heroin with dirty needles for days and they got just sores everywhere. I mean, you don't want to see a whole lot of them people coming into your emergency room because the chance of spreading infectious diseases just increases. And yeah, $1.8 million a year they're going to save just from that kind of shit let's not even talk about the 907 people that died in Philly in, in 2016. All right. All right. It's not just the supervised consumption sites provide a place where people can use drugs with trained staff ready to intervene in case something goes wrong. That's important. Um, you don't get that all the time on the streets or, you know, the kid that's, doing heroin at his mom and dad's house they don't even know he does drugs all of a sudden they come in and he's dead or he's he could be revived but they didn't even know he you know that's part of it but not the whole story these spaces also give people a place where they can take their time as they use drugs so clients uh, can guarantee they're using a new needle make sure the dose they're taking is okay and sure they clean their skin before injecting, avoid pushing any dirt with the needle, and so on. All of which can reduce not just the risk of overdose, but other health problems related to drug use. The sites can also be used, as the EMCDDA report included or indicated, to link people to addiction treatment. Despite the evidence, uh, a common refrain is that these facilities simply would not work in the U.S., even if they work in Europe, Canada, and Australia. Yeah, kind of like universal health care and um, free college tuition don't work in them countries. Or even if they did work in them countries, then they don't. They wouldn't work here. Whatever, man. It's because the government's too corrupt. 
there's too many monopoly players like paying the money so that nobody else can do good ideas. <laughs> That's all that is. The most illuminating evidence against this claim comes from the studies that looked at an underground safe injection site in an undisclosed location in the U.S. The facility opened in September of 2014 under the rationale that, due to the opioid epidemic, the group simply could not wait for the bureau bureaucratic uh, approval or legalization of supervised consumption facilities to act. The executive director of the group put it in dire terms, quote, too many of our people were dying every week. If we waited until someone gave us permission, we'd still be waiting and everybody we cared about would be dead. A team of researchers followed the facility, publishing two studies so far in the American Journal of Preventative Medicine and in the International Journal of Drug Policy. They found that staff and drug users at the facility reported the exact same benefits from the site that were reported in other parts of the world. Oh, wow. You mean it actually does work wherever it works everywhere else? Because people are just people no matter what what, what is it the, about these people that make these claims that makes them think that america is so much different oh those would never work here what do you think is different about us we're too good for that shit them dirty europeans oh they'll let people shoot dope in their bathroom i mean what is it what is the thinking in america everybody's got this attitude like we're so you know we don't do anything bad or immoral around here like come on man and whatever i'm not even saying doing drugs is bad or immoral i'm just saying that these people act like we're goody goody two shoes and you know we don't even need that are you kidding there ain't that many people that are drug addicts that need a place to shoot their drugs safely um really have you seen the numbers <clears throat> so peter davison of the university of california in san diego was unequivocal about his team's findings quote the big takeaway from this research and all the data we have so far is that these kinds of facilities have a similar effect here in the United States as they do elsewhere. They reduce harms associated with drug use and they reduce social nuance or nuisance associated with drug use in the same way they do elsewhere. The U.S. has a lot more room for harm reduction and treatment. That years of research back this approach and other wealthy nations around the world have successfully tried it for decades shows just how far behind the U.S. is in its approach to drugs. Consider needle exchanges, where people can go get a new syringes for drug use and discard used needles. These have been legally operating in parts of the U.S. since the late 80s with proven track records. Yet much of America remains reluctant to allow needle exchanges at all. I guess they would rather trip over the dirty needles on their way to work. <clears throat> A needle exchange program based on the empirical evidence vetted separately by Johns Hopkins researchers and the World Health Organization and the Center for Disease Control and Prevention should be one of the least controversial ideas in public health. For decades, studies have repeatedly found that needle exchanges have prevent, uh, helped prevent the spread of diseases such as HIV and hepatitis C that can spread through the used syringes while not increasing overall drug use. Yet, in Lawrence County, Indiana, officials decided to end their program. That wasn't due to any new scientific evidence. Instead, it seemed to be due to a wrong view that addiction is a moral failure rather than a medical condition. Contrary to what major, most, uh, most major medical organizations say, County Commissioner Rodney King, who voted against the program, told NBC News, My conclusion was that... Whoops. <clears throat> my conclusion was that I could not support this program and be true to my principles and my beliefs. He quoted the Bible before casting his vote. I wish he would have included what, what he said out of the Bible. Um, if parts of the U.S. aren't willing to accept even the needle exchange... It's hardly as surprising that uh, there's a struggle to get supervised drug consumption rooms up and running in much of the country, no matter how much evidence there is for them. <clears throat> the same applies to other policy interventions for the opioid epidemic. Naloxone is an opioid overdose antidote that can literally save lives, yet in many states it can be hard to get because it requires a prescription. A big problem when an overdose can kill someone or do serious damage in minutes prescription heroin programs allow people to obtain safe source of heroin instead of street drugs that can be laced with who knows what 
and there's evidence from Canada and Europe to support them, but there's no serious discussion in America about trying them here. <clears throat> Even the gold standard for opioid addiction treatment remains mired in a stigma that and old thinking. Medications like methadone and, uh, well, we know that that's Suboxone, are proven to help a lot of people overcome their opioid addictions. <clears throat> and with studies showing that they cut all cause morality or mortality wait a minute let's slow that down with studies showing that they cut all cause mortality among opioid addiction patients by half or more and the medications are backed by health groups like the center for disease control and prevent prevention national institute on drug abuse and the world health organization yeah because the the shady manufacturers that make these drugs <laughs> have always been able to have those people in their back pockets. So we know that's why those drugs are accepted. But what about medical marijuana? They're not even going to mention that in this article, by the way. Um, yet it's common to see public officials and politicians malign with uh, the medications. Former Health and Human Services Secretary under Trump, Tom Price, shady, corrupt, uh, big pharma lapdog, argued that medications like Suboxone are just substituting one opioid for another. Hmm, that's weird that you argued that, but that's not the case, man. Come on. This is a popular misconception, but it is mis it misunderstands how addiction works. The problem with addiction isn't necessarily drug use. Most Americans, after all, use all kinds of drugs, caffeine, alcohol, medication, with few problems. The problem is when the, that drug use begins to hurt someone's day-to-day -day function by, say, putting his health risk at risk or leading him to steal or commit other crimes to get heroin. Medication like Suboxone let people with the drug addiction get a handle on their drug use without such negative outcomes, stabilizing the dangers of addiction, even if the medication needs to be taken indefinitely. <clears throat> this problem comes up again and again with addiction. It's not the evidence... It's not that the evidence isn't there for policy or for a policy of medical inter intervention, but rather the stigma and that old thinking outweigh the evidence in people's minds. <sighs> Quote, some of it is we've had this war on drugs uh, going on since President Nixon, Davison of the University of California in San Diego, told me. Quote, a huge amount of effort has gone into a particular way of dealing with drugs in society. There's a lot of institutional inertia around that. So suggesting something that, on the face of it, goes completely against what we've been trying to do for the last 40 or 50 years, people are going to push against that, particularly the people who have been doing it for years. People can be very slow to change their minds about things. Oh, yeah, and the corruption is very slow to let anybody do anything except for what they want it to do. Until that changes, policy interventions that seem like common sense based on the evidence will continue to struggle to gain a foothold in the U.S. America will continue to fail to adopt even the bare minimum of harm reduction approaches and treatment, much less try to truly innovative ideas. So more people will die of drug overdoses than could have otherwise been prevented. Um, excellent reporting, but like I said... I would have definitely included the 12,000 uh, comments that were made to the Opioid Commission about medical marijuana and cannabis helping addicts uh, break the chains of addiction to opioids and heroin, as well as testimonials from people who, were, who chose medical marijuana for chronic pain and never got addicted in the first place. Or we're already on chronic, uh, we're on meds for chronic pain, such as opioid pills, and got off of them with medical marijuana. So, a uh, good article by German Lopez. Um, and yeah, man, these injection sites, I'm all for it. So, also all for the prescription heroin that they would administer, like they did in Amsterdam and, and Vancouver. So, you know. They're good ideas, man. That's all I got. Uh, hit the subscribe button and see you next time.